Okay, these are uh, this is the uh, Waco DC two fifty liter fridge. Just got these uh, came in from China. What it is is simply a fridge or freezer uh, temperature gauge. So you can see it's on three point six now. Uh, when I opened the box and put this one on, the temperature was twenty seven point four. So that's showing the highest temperature this was, not the fridge, and that's the lowest that this this fridge has got down to 0 0.5 which is perfect so we're working between about 0 0.5 and uh, 4 degrees so that's excellent. This is the uh, thermometer I have on the freezer, the 200 litre freezer and again I installed this one actually yesterday when it was a bit warm here so you can probably see that it's sitting on 22.4 uh, uh, the highest temperature it got to, well that's when I pulled it out of the box yesterday before I put it in, 36.7 degrees Celsius, so pretty warm, and the lowest it's got down to is minus 23.4, so that's what it's running at the moment, minus 22, which is good. So, like I say, they're excellent, these little uh, monitors, and I'll put a link in the description, and maybe even a photo where I got them off eBay, they weren't too bad, so they're well worth looking at, so... Just, uh, just, just uh, work on the principle that you know I now can see exactly what's going on inside the uh, fridge and freezer all the time. Not that expensive and uh, I'm very happy with them. Okay, this is just showing you the uh, DC chest freezer fridge I have. This is plugged into the 24 volt system. You can see that it's running uh, off uh, directly to the batteries. But I'm now going to show you and show you the readings on the kilowatt meter, how it's done through the inverter as well. Right, I've just run a, a, an AC cable from the inverter. It's now attached to the actual kilowatt meter. Okay, so what we're now going to do is plug the uh, DC fridge through the inverter running on 240 volt power. And how we do that is Here's the little connection that you use. You're talking about there's a 12, 24 volt uh, plug. And if you read on the back of this adapter, you will see, get that a bit closer, probably out of focus. But anyway, what it's telling you, it can the input can be 100 to 240 volt, so it'll run a 110 or 240 volt. So here we go. I'm going to plug the uh, out of the uh, DC. into the actual socket so that it will now convert 240 through the inverter. Let's have a look. Now, uh, whoops. now you can see the actual compressor is not on the uh, DC fridge freezer. This is the chest DC fridge freezer. But that will kick in shortly and I'll show you what that shows when the actual compressor kicks in. So it's sitting, drawing 1.5 watts before the compressor kicks in. Well, the chest freezer, this is not coming on, this is very efficient. So I'm going to try and open the doors to drop the temperature so we can get the compressor going so I can get this uh, video out of the way. Come on boys. Oh, the compressor on. I'm doing a video here. Let's see if that will lower the temperature a little bit. Or we'll actually raise the temperature a bit, I mean. So the compressor will kick in. Uh, they normally sit, uh, as you can see, those two numbers in blue. That They'll sit on... Uh, here we go. Look at that. The compressor's kicking in. Alright, let's have a look down on this now. You can see it starts off just like the other DC fridge and freezers. Uh, I hope you can see that. Uh, it's starting off about 90. That's 90 watts. And like I say, this uh, chest fridge freezer normally runs directly off DC current attached to a battery. So, and with the appropriate fuses in there, of course. Uh, but I did open the doors and let it flap around a bit so a bit of warm air could get in there. And now you can hear the inverter kick in. It doesn't always kick in. It kicks in uh, when it needs to. It has a, an inbuilt fan like most inverters 
do as well. It's a, this one, this particular inverter is a 1500 watt pure sine wave. So you can see that that's what it would draw when it first starts off. All right, I'll let a fair bit of hot air in there. But that will come down just like the other ones with the thermostat and get to the point that it will shut off and again turn off and only pull a very few watts. But I just wanted to show you that was the DC fridge freezer, the chest one that I normally uh, let's just pull this out of it. This is the one that I normally have for my drinks now. Okay, so that's what that is all about. That's showing you that that can run through the inverter on an adapter just as well as it can run directly to DC through the batteries. All right, so the reason I'm showing all of this is that I've had emails. Uh, people wanted to know uh, how directly to use this uh, kilowatt meter. So I'm doing that. I'm just showing you some few things. I'm now going to show you, this is a, uh, a charging unit for an Azito. Now this is for a whippersnipper. Uh, okay, I'll just show you what that is. And there is the battery pack that slides onto the actual whippersnipper or brush cutter, whatever you call it. Alright, so we're just going to now plug this in. Okay. Watch as this gets plugged in to be charged. This is again connected to the actual um, inverter. So this is now charging, and what this will do, it'll take uh, oh, a little time to warm up and start drawing power, but it slow charges it over uh, about two to three hours. Uh, and as you can see, it doesn't use very many watts. Again, then this is uh, it's an 18 volt. We go. If you can have a read, it's probably too close. Not sure if you can see it. It's 18 volts. Oh, I'm sure that's not working, but so this is an 18 volt application that will in fact charge the battery up, which allows me to use my uh, well solar powered whippersnipper, so I can do the edges around the garden. I've got two of these uh, battery packs, so I can probably get about 15 to 20 minutes out of a uh, one charge. And of course I have the other one charged as well. You can see it's slowly building up. I hope that's coming out. I'm using a different camera today. So hopefully it, uh, it works out alright. You can see what this is do doing. This is charging the battery. It'll take time to do so. But it shows you how it starts off. starts filling up this battery with energy. And all of this energy has been provided through the inverter which is powered by the batteries. Which is powered by the sun. So let's look at another one. Let's see, we'll unplug this, and you've all seen these before, this is, this is nothing new, it's a portable electric drill, this is a 12 volt, as you can see, okay, quickly unplugs, same method, we're talking about how do you charge it, well, normally on the grid you would simply just plug it into your wall, this is a 240. These are Australian plugs, so if you're a bit confused about what you're seeing, uh, too bad, because that's all we've got here. So what you're doing here is you've got a, a little stand, which you'll put your battery into, which I'm sure you've all seen before. Let's try and get it in the right way. Okay, so that's now ready to be charged. This is the adapter that turns the 240 into basically 12 volt. You can see it's starting off on zero. Let's put it in. Okay. Again, this is a 12 volt battery. Oh, I don't know if you can see that. I can't really see the camera. So if you can't see it, believe me, it's charging. Again, it's a trickle type charge. It will take uh, X amount of hours, probably two, two and a bit. Generally, you just come back and you'll see the lights on the base of this. Uh, it will stay green and that means it's ready. But this is how you charge certain things in regards to um, appliances like the, uh, uh, the um, whippersnipper and the drill and any other power tools that you've got with that type of equipment. So it will just, it'll just take time. You got, we, I've got a bank in the shed where I just put them all up and charge them as needed. And it's quite okay to get uh, batteries like these uh, from your drill and the uh, whippersnipper and even have them go really down low. That's okay. They're designed for that. So that's how you do it. The people that ask me uh, questions in email, that's, that's what actually happens. I'm now going to go and get um, a 
12 volt television I've got I want to show you that as well this is the uh, 12 volt television which I'm now going to show you it's a 24 inch screen it's also got um, you may not be able to see that it's got a DVD disc player but more importantly details on the back now I'm probably going to have to zoom in for you to see those so I can get this a bit better not really let's try that let's take it in a bit more I tell you I'm working with an e-camera all right if, if you can't read that so put it just a bit closer oh, here we go you can see I'm an expert with cameras all right that's probably the best I'm going to get it it's a 24 inch or 61 centimeter full HD LED TV DVD combo uh, and it runs off 12 volts and it's telling you 3.5 amps okay so that's very economical let's just power it up how we do that is here is the connection obviously that's the power cable again it goes through an AC adapter to show you that all right that's specific for this television and here is the uh, kilowatt meter let's plug it in all right now you can see it just starting off as it first starts off it gives a whoops that might help you it's using uh, very little about one amp I think I've kept an eye on this for over a year now it's about one or half an amp now you can see that that is just showing half an amp I'm now going to turn it on uh, let me just take this out a bit that's better all right I'm going to try this is just the remote I'm going to try and turn it on from behind okay I suppose I should uh, turn it around to turn it on there we go you can now see the television on and there's the reading it's going to be variable to start with it's going to say up to 28 29 just let the screen load obviously I've not got the error attached just got this brought it over the table to show you all right this is showing 28.2 watts now you can get the big screen tellies and I've got one which I do watch occasionally for a big an event I do like my cricket or my football but only watch for an hour or two and that'll read on the big one about 200 watts so there's a huge difference so this is what I watch most of the time if I watch telly at all which is not very often but running it basically uh, because we run a 24 volt system uh, one amp an hour so more than happy with that so that's again answering some questions for some viewers that wanted to know how and what and what were the readings it's going to vary with your own appliances that's why I've, I've emphasized to get one of these you, it'll teach you it'll show you what you need to do all right another one I'm going to show you because I want to put the fan on anyway it's just the normal pedestal fan so just give me a couple of secs and I'll be right back okay this is the uh, well it's a standard uh, standard fan it's an AC fan uh, and I can power it by going through the inverter and uh, I'm going to show you we're going to start it off again I don't know if you can see this I hope you can see this uh, it's zero let's plug the uh, fan in there now it's not using anything which is really really good we now stick it onto one I'm going to do this three settings on most pedestal uh, fans that's the case so let's start it off on number one and you'll probably lose me a little bit because of the fan noise Right, that's number one that's using 41 watts okay let's click it up to number two and again it's now increased to about 47 watts now on the highest setting is 55 watts so you can see the variable differences with the increase in power that the motor is drawing uh, but 55 56 watts to run a fan on high which is really nice by the way it's quite sticky and warm again today um, and now you've heard the 
you can hear in the background the inverter just kicking in to cool itself down with its own fans but to give you an idea you know if you ran a fan say for 10 hours on high and this is quite strong uh, you're probably talking about what does that cost you in energy well it's not too bad uh, nowhere near what an air conditioner draws of course um, so for 10 hours you're looking at about uh, you know half a kilowatt so I hope this has helped some of those people that ask me questions about you know how, how does this work what's the killer what meter and how do I use it this is just showing you you know like I can tell you right now if I ran this fan for one hour uh, it's going to use about uh, 550 or 560 watts so I know I need to produce at least that much but sorry for 10 hours if I run that for 10 hours 550 or 560 watts that means I know what I have to produce to give me that energy so that's why I say it's better for you to work backwards find out what your appliances are using and if you need to change them like that DC television I just uh, just showed you that used very little in wattage compared to a big big wattage TV everything's relevant when it comes down to what can you use don't ask what size system you should buy first find out how much power you're consuming all right I hope that answers some of the questions that you've been asking me and thank you for watching